There are still a few stops left on our Yucatan journey, and today's destination could easily grace the pages of a National Geographic spread. It's one of those places you find yourself staring at in photographs, questioning the likelihood of ever standing there yourself. As it turns out, the journey to this technicolor corner of the world was simpler than we expected. Today we're stepping into a landscape where the color palette has been hijacked by pink, and the typical laws of nature seem to blush at the audacity of it all. Our mission was to see the rose-tinted waters and their hot pink flamingos, yet we discovered something that was far richer, a piece of paradise that didn't just live up to the hype, it transcended it. Welcome to Celestoon! Adventure. We're off to Celestoon, and I have a joke to kick off our day. Okay. What soccer position does a flamingo play? Flamingoli! Ah, that was bad. <laughs> Celestoon is famous, one, because of the color, and two, there are flamingos. So I hope we're lucky and we can see some today. Romania it takes around 1 hour and 15 minutes now to get to Celestun and we are enjoying the road. You're doing a great job driving these days. As we head over to Celestun, let's get you familiar with this tiny town. With a population of just above 6,000 residents, Celestun is a fishing village famous for its shrimp harvest and as a result, home to some of the best shrimps in the region. But it's not just seafood you'll find here. Celestun is nestled within the expansive Celestun Biosphere Reserve, a sprawling 147,500 acre wetland that's home to over 300 different bird species, including the iconic flamingos. The flamingos generally grace this landscape between November and March. We found ourselves here mid-March and weren't sure if we'd get to see any, so we kept our expectations low and told ourselves that if nothing else, we'll at least get a nice boat ride. Wow, oh, it looks beautiful. The white sand with the turquoise, 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 turquoise water. Beautiful. Juliana and me, we were talking about like the water over here in Yucatan is not as blue as the one that we saw in Quintana Roo. But the good thing over here in Yucatan is they have good sunsets because it's the other side, the opposite side of the peninsula. As we were pulling into town, we made the last minute decision that we wanted to actually grab some breakfast first. And I resorted to my, my old ways of pulling up Google and trying to see what place has good reviews. What was I thinking? Bartine taught me that the best way to find good food in Mexico is to see where people are lining up. And we saw quite a few taco stands downtown, so we're gonna go pick the best one. Or the one with the longest line. Muchas gracias, buen día. So over there. It looks like they sell it, um, they, yeah, you say like 50 pesos, 80 pesos. So they measure it and everybody take it to go. They don't ask tortas like us. So it was a very experience. It looks like all the locals there are over here and it's nice. Nice, I like it. It's in front of the Seven Max, just in front of the main plaza, if you want to try it. Okay, that torta was amazing, was better than I expected. Now I see why people is lying. And the town is beautiful and charming, but we're not here to discover the town. We're over here to see if we can find some flamingos. So we have to find our tour. We don't need to tell you guys how to find the tour because the tour will find you. <laughs> That's right, there's a lot of people just hunting yes. for tourists. Yes, it's pretty much the main thing to do here. That's right. So we find one that is 500 pesos each, and it takes around two hours, and it's go all around the place. Yeah, 
And in all seriousness, if you do have trouble finding a tour, just go to the beach. <laughs> You'll see it. You won't have a problem. <laughs> you won't. What's wrong with that? Hand? I know. And so the adventure began. The tour took off once we had enough people in the boat, and we began our journey into the Ria, as the tour guide called it. I knew the term Rio meant river, but I wasn't sure what Ria was. Luckily, one of the other passengers asked for clarification. Now, we took the two-hour version of this tour by leaving from the beach. Alternatively, there is a bridge at the entrance of Celestun, where you can do this tour in less time since you don't need to enter the mouth of the Ria from the ocean. As we navigated the waterways, we were greeted with acres and acres of mangroves. And as time went on, the world seemed to transform around us. The familiar hues of the landscape appeared to shift and mutate. The muddy water, previously a dull brown, was now glowing with a rosy hue. I questioned my senses. Could the water truly be turning pink? Or was it an optical illusion, a trick of light perhaps? Then, in the corner of my eye, a flash of pink flew across the sky. Was it just my imagination? Or were those long-legged, pink-feathered creatures soaring above us? Before we had time to fully comprehend what was happening, the boat's motor slowed to a whisper, then stopped. We found ourselves in the heart of a mesmerizing spectacle. Dozens, no, hundreds of flamingos. The guide went on to tell us a little bit about these fascinating creatures we were witnessing. We were in the company of the American flamingo, the only flamingo species that naturally is found in North America. The richness of their pink hue correlates to their age. The older the bird, the more vibrant its color. This unique coloring comes from their diet, which is primarily composed of brine shrimp and red and blue-green algae. These food sources not only tint the flamingo's feathers, but also give the water a pinkish hue. Flamingos have a peculiar style of feeding. They plunge their heads upside down in the water, where their uniquely designed beaks filter out mud and silt, leaving behind just their food. But they're sensitive to water levels, too high, and they become buoyant and aren't able to eat. So as they feel water levels rise, they fly away to another area where they can comfortably stand. We made it to the main attraction, the flamingos, and the water is actually pink. I don't know if you can tell on camera but there's so many I've never seen them fly before this is so cool that was incredible now we go into a mangrove uh, tunnel so that also will be amazing how crazy eh? yeah What a way to make an entrance. <laughs> These mangroves are an important part of the ecosystem and serve as Mother Nature's water filter by filtering pollutants and trapping sediments from runoff. Plus, they are home to crocodiles, fish, and even sea turtles. After making our way through the mangrove tunnel, we were speed back into the Ria and headed to our final spot, El Ojo de Agua. Here, we were allowed to get out and explore the mangroves by foot, and even bathe in the watering hole. However, a casual remark from a guide made us think. He mentioned his own reluctance to bathe in these waters due to the presence of crocodiles. Taking his advice to heart, we decided to skip the swim and instead return to the safety of our boat. With our exploration of the mangroves concluded, we headed back, reaching the beach just in time for lunch. Okay, the tour was amazing, but I strongly recommend you, whenever you're asking about what the tour uh, includes, Includes, you just make sure because the people that we were in they got a little bit confused yeah they were they were a little confused but it had everything that we were expecting to see uh, overall Celestune is freaking awesome it's beautiful. what the heck okay we I did not expect to fall in love with this town so much I thought we were just gonna go see flamingos today I know I know it's beautiful it's a laid-back vibe uh, just town in front of the 
sea, so wow, it's beautiful. It's awesome. A lot of people are swimming here at the beach right now. We're grabbing something to eat, and I don't know about you, but I was inspired by those flamingos eating those little shrimp babies, and I was like, I need to order some shrimp myself. <laughs> <laughs> As usual. So it's good and I ordered something that is called, um, it's a ceviche that is called Flamingo, but it's actually pink. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, the minute we saw it on the menu we were like, that is perfect. If you're following our journey, you know that Juliana always orders the same thing and I'm the one that is taking risk <laughs> on food. It's the truth. What can I say? What do you guys think I ordered? Those of you who, who watch a lot, leave it in the comments, you already know. <laughs> Uh, anyway, buon appetito, mi amore. Provecho. Provecho. Gracias. Perfect. Oh, it's una Gracias. Looks like they scooped that water right up from the river. <laughs> Actually, they did. They do. <laughs> Accidentally, we find this place and it was very good. Juliana, your shrimp and egg, especially that coconut with I don't know which kind of sauce it is. It's actually peaches, can you believe it? That sounds good. And also, my dish, it looks amazing. Yeah. This is the type of place that I'm. Uh, it's a shame that we're not spending more time over here, you know? I know. It's a, it's a type of place that you want to go back. Yeah. Now, off camera, Martina and I have had a very, very rough week of work. My gosh, if you don't know, we work remotely while we make all these videos. And it is trips like this that we turn to each other and say, this is what we're working so hard for, to be able to have nice days at the beach like this. and. I feel totally recharged. This was exactly what we needed. It was amazing to discover this beautiful destination over yeah. here in the state of Yucatan. So long. Travel well. Make the world your neighborhood. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.